Okay, today we have a video that we don't think the big crypto companies are gonna like, but that's okay. Here at Whiteboard Crypto, we do what we want, when we want, and how we want when it comes to educating you guys about complex crypto topics. Before we go any further though, we want to say that this video was made for educational and entertainment purposes only. Anything you do outside of this video is on you. We just want to be able to help you make the most educated decisions. Welcome to Whiteboard Crypto, where we explain complex cryptocurrency topics using stories and examples and analogies, and today we're going to talk to you about the famous term, not your keys, not your crypto. And we're going to explain how you can have the best privacy and anonymity that the crypto universe offers. Let's dig in. First of all, what are your keys? When we talk about keys, we are referring to both your public and your private keys. You can think of these as your account number and then also your password to your bank login. Your public key is needed when receiving funds. This is where another user knows which address is yours. It's kind of like an account number. It's reserved only for the account that you have within the bank, which in this example is the blockchain, and will be used to identify your account without actually using your password. Now, the private key would be the password to the login information on the banking website and would be the same as the login to your crypto wallet. This is the key that only you should know and not anyone else. Because if anyone else knows your private key, they can drain every bit of crypto that you might be holding. To make it easier, most wallets have 12 to 24 words that you can write down to be able to log into your wallet instead of trying to memorize all of the 64 letters and numbers that actually make up a private key. If you want a more in-depth explanation on how these public and private keys work and how they are secure, you can actually watch our video over asymmetric encryption, which will be linked down in the description below. This video, we're gonna to stay a little simpler though. In short, your private keys are used to create your public address, and your private keys are also used to send your money. This is why you don't want anyone else to have access to them. The next topic we're going to get into is the difference between accessing and owning. Because something that is very important to note when it comes to cryptocurrencies is the difference between access and ownership. Access can be shared. It is when multiple people have access to your crypto. They can move it around without your verification if they wanted to. You're pretty much sharing it with them. Ownership, on the other hand, is where only you have access to your funds. Only you can move them. Imagine if your friend, or even Safvik, had access to your house while you were away on vacation, and they decided to throw a party. Well, they had access to your house and they did what they wanted to, even if they said they weren't going to throw a party. Well, when it comes to cryptocurrencies and any blockchain network, if anyone other than yourself has access to those private keys, you should completely consider your account compromised, because when it comes to money, Money, it's best to assume the worst. The difference between accessing and ownership is trust. With ownership, you don't have to trust anyone. You are the only person who can access those funds. If you share your private keys though, you have to trust that other people aren't going to steal them. You might be wondering why this is important, and now we're going to get into one of the major hacks in cryptocurrency of all time. In fact, one of the most famous cryptocurrency hacks of all time was an exchange called Mt. Gox. It was estimated that Mt. Gox, which is basically an exchange very similar to Coinbase, had been jacked for around 850,000 bitcoins, which they could only assume that it was stolen, but it was actually some from their accounts and their customers. So these customers were simply holding bitcoin in their wallets shared on the Mt. Gox service. But here's the issue. These customers trusted the company to keep their wallets safe. Now we don't know if there was an insider who was like, hmm, that sure is a lot of money. I'd like to have that for myself. Or if there was a hacker who found a vulnerability. But either way, a ton of private keys were lost and thus a ton of bitcoins were stolen. We can assume they were stolen because they weren't returned. To put this into perspective, 850,000 bitcoins is literally 7% of all the bitcoins out there. Roughly half a billion dollars. I don't know about you, but I could do some damage with half a billion dollars. This is why you do not want to share your private key with anyone else, including other companies. Speaking of companies, let's go over the problem with Robinhood and Coinbase. These are non-custodial exchanges, which basically means they do not give you a wallet for yourself. They share one with you. Robinhood doesn't even give you a wallet. They just allow you to buy and sell. This means if you wanted to buy crypto and send it to your friend on Robinhood, you literally cannot do that. Similarly, if you wanted to receive some crypto from your friend, you also cannot do that. Robinhood is a horrible place to buy crypto if you believe in the fundamentals of why crypto was created in the first 
first place, and that is decentralization, privacy, and trust. You don't even get an address with Robinhood. They just act as a middleman to buy and sell certain cryptos for you. Coinbase, on the other hand, actually lets you send the crypto that you've purchased off their platform. However, if you keep it on their platform and they get hacked due to a database issue on their side, all of your crypto could be gone. Very similar to the Mt. Gox problem. Coinbase is a good beginner exchange because it is fairly easy to buy a ton of large market cap cryptocurrencies and then it's also very easy to use their user-friendly platform to send your newly bought crypto to a wallet that only you have access to. The key here is that you're just using Coinbase as an exchange, not a wallet. We highly recommend sending your crypto to a wallet that only you control. So that way you have 100% ownership of the crypto. In the case with Coinbase, they actually have those private keys. So technically, anyone at Coinbase might be able to send your crypto to their wallet. Tumble it using a tumbler, which if you don't know what a crypto tumbler is, you can actually watch our video on that topic. And if they used it, you'll never know where your crypto went. So what's the solution? Two common wallets that you can send your crypto to to ensure you are the only person who actually owns it are MetaMask and Ledger. MetaMask is a browser extension, so you can use it on your desktop computer. Technically, if your computer has a virus, you could lose your funds, but it's still much more secure than Coinbase or storing your crypto on some website. MetaMask is used by hundreds of thousands of people and the code is audited by very curious people, so it's pretty much an industry standard. You can also use MetaMask to interact with decentralized applications. Ledger, on the other hand, offers a USB version of a wallet. The private key is encrypted and then stored on that USB, where you must insert your USB ledger and then connect the device to be able to actually send your crypto. Technically, it's much more secure than MetaMask, and, in this case, if you don't share your private key with anyone else, you can be 100% certain that those private keys aren't shared with anyone else. So in conclusion, when it comes to crypto, you really do not want anyone else having your private keys. To do that, you can buy crypto on a big exchange like Coinbase, and then send it to a wallet that only you have access to, which MetaMask and Ledger are two pieces of software that allow you to create those private keys. As we end this video, we want to thank you for watching, we hope that you learned something, and we hope to see you in the next video.